Hey Wilson, welcome to Rauta. This is Turku, my home city, featuring one great Greek band, Joth Iria, which I'm really stoked to see for the first time. And here I have a gentleman who I got to meet for the first time about three years ago in Scotland. Sir, please, could you introduce yourself to the camera? My name is uh, Jim, or maybe known as Jim Mutilator. I used uh, to be in Rotting Christ from the beginning up to Tragic of the Lost Lover album. And after my absence from the music for many years, uh, I returned with a new band called Geotheria before two years. And I'm really happy to be for first time in my life in Finland for a very first show with my band Geotheria. Yoth Iria is an interesting band because when I heard your first EP, my mind was blown. Now, to give you this a little bit background, uh, Rotten Christ, when I first heard it around 1994, I think, it was one of the first black metal bands I got to listen to. And then with the Triarchy of Lost Lovers album, well, it went too much gothic in my opinion and I kind of gave up on that. But when I heard your material, I was instantly in love with the music. I was like, Okay, this is the music I want to hear more. This is the EP I love so much. And I remember it, picking it for my album of the year, even though it's EP in 2020 when it came out. Now, this long pause between Roddy Christ and Yon Iria, almost 30 years, well, 25 years at least. Uh, how did you came back to play this kind of music? Uh, just uh, have a joke. It was like uh, the lost year of Jesus Christ. <laughs> okay, just kidding, of course. Okay. Uh, you know, uh, we formed the uh, Rotten Christ back in '87. Uh, uh, actually, we have started like Black Church in '85 to change the name to Rotten Christ in '87. I was very active with Rotting Christ for about 10 years, creating such albums like uh, Passage to Arcturo, uh, Thy Mighty Contract, Non Serviam, and uh, Tragic of the Lost Lovers. Of course, uh, I had uh, a big participation also in Dead, uh, Dead Poem album and a little uh, less uh, in Sleep of the Angel. Uh, after this album, my tracks uh, disappeared. In fact, I was uh, always occupied with the uh, music as I started my own record uh, metal store in the center of Athens for many years. And uh, to be honest, uh, immediately after my departure from Not in Christ, I have in mind to create a new band. But uh, to be honest, uh, my personal life and my personal uh, occupations. Don't forget, uh, I was uh, very young uh, and I had uh, two kids. So it was very, very difficult for me to grow up two kids uh, alone in a very hard uh, situation, a uh, period of my life. Uh, but uh, to be honest, uh, in the mid, uh, in about 2006, 2007, I started composing music for uh, this uh, visionary band. Uh, after uh, a lot of uh, things uh, outside music, finally I was able to create Geotheria in uh, 2019. Maybe, two, yes, yes, 2019. And uh, to release uh, the first EP, Adri Kishwei, also to mention that I'm very happy for your kind words and your support to this EP. And uh, last year, uh, our debut album, As the Flame Withers, see the light of the black metal world. That's a brief uh, story about uh, my musical uh, life. You are not the only ex rotting Christ member in Yoth Iria. Can you share more information about that? You have a legendary vocalist as well. Yes, yes. Uh, in, uh, the vocalist of my band is the legendary The Mangus. 
the famous uh, vocalist behind, and bass player behind uh, Necromancia. Also in more bands uh, like Third Lord and uh, some very good uh, cooperations with uh, a legendary Finnish musician, Mika yeah, Latin. I remember and, they had this. That what was the name of the, the band uh, where they had this kind Diab of industry? Diabolos Rising. Yeah, Diabolos Rising. And uh, another one band called, uh, I think, Raism. Oh, correct. yes, yes, correct. Raism was also there. So you are both very, very uh, experienced musicians in the Greek scene, and you have had a lot of bands and uh, a lot of music. But creating this kind of a new band is almost like taking us back to the early days of uh, Greek black metal scene and, and the music and the warm feeling of Greek extreme metal. Um, how does writing this kind of music work for you nowadays? Uh, at uh, the beginning I had, uh, I have to, to, to tell you that uh, it was already finished the album and uh, I, I, don't ha I didn't have a singer for the album. It was uh, Daigle Patterson, uh, you know, the, the writer, the author of the book Non Serviam of Rotting Christ, yep. that uh, he told me why you don't uh, call uh, the Mangus to be the singer of the band. Uh, after I called uh, the Mangus at the phone, was like, no, I don't have any time, uh, really I can't help you. Finally, he told me, okay, send me the tracks. Maybe I can make some, uh, you know, vocals, uh, not for all the album, just one, two tracks. Okay, after uh, I emailed him uh, the tracks, he called me back and he told me, man, this stuff is uh, fantastic. I want to make all the album and to run with you this new band. So that's the story. And of course, I know Mangus from uh, 89, after our uh, Satanaste demo demos, you know, with Rotting Christ, this yeah. legendary demo. And uh, Mangus uh, was also in uh, both, uh, you know, legendary albums of Rotting Christ, Die Mighty Contract uh, and uh, Non Serviam. Also to mention our uh, mini LP, Pass to Arturo in 91. So I had a very, very big respect uh, in his personality, in his knowledge about music and especially black metal. And of course, it's a man that it's uh, very easily to cooperate with him. What about the other members you have in the band? They are newer generation, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, uh, the, all the album was recorded with uh, George Emanuel the guitarist of another great new Greek band called uh, Lucifer Child. And also to mention, very important for George Emanuel, that uh, he was the guitarist of Rotting Christ for seven years or more. He's also uh, the owner of Pentagram Studio, where uh, EP and uh, the album of Yotheria was recorded. And uh, the last uh, Rotten Crash album also was recorded there. I think uh, George Emanuel is a multi talented uh, artist, not only a great uh, musician and a great uh, uh, producer, but also a fantastic guy and a true dedicated black metal boy. Even uh, it could be my son, actually, he's near to my kids' uh, age. George helped me very, very much and very, very strongly and uh, give a lot of his passions in my band. So what about the lyrics of Yoth Iria? Mm -hmm. Can you tell something about them? Like what is, what, what keeps you inspired and what these lyrics are all about? My, my old time motto was, uh, and it is, uh, non serviam. So also the lyrics of Yoth Iria it's about uh, no fear and uh, freedom. Uh, release yourself uh, for, from everything that depresses you, everything uh, may, uh, creates you fears, etc. Uh, 
of course, there are a lot of uh, mystic paths into our lyrics, like uh, ancient religions, pre-Christianic religions, uh, uh, a lot of uh, experience about occultism and magic. In, uh, in, uh, it's a usual stuff for us. Uh, all my career was based on uh, occultism, uh, uh, let's say Luciferianism, uh, and uh, these uh, beliefs are uh, my way of life. Uh, I'm really into this kind of uh, stuff uh, since I was uh, 14 years old uh, kid. It's not exaggeration to tell you that uh, in my age of uh, 14, I said fuck off to Christianity, fuck off to all religions, fuck off to all these shits that uh, depressed uh, humanity and the people. For me, Lucifer, it's uh, a revolution, it's a vision. It's, uh, you know, a rebel against all tyranny. It's, uh, for me, Lucifer, it's freedom, it's light, it's knowledge. So it's kind of so, this is a reflex in my new in my lyrics and in my music in general. This is interesting that coming from uh, Greece, you are very far from uh, countries that are mostly known for black metal, especially Norway and Sweden, but of course Finland and other countries as well. And yet your uh, mindset and ideas are very similar. Like you said, it's all about rebellion and free freeing yourself from Christianity and all that stuff. No. Probably a lot of people know how Christianity has been in the Nordic countries, but how it was in your teenage years, how Christianity was in Greece? Uh, in fact, uh, my country uh, was uh, slaved by Christians. If you study the history, uh, Greece to become uh, Christian, slaughtered uh, about uh, 50 million uh, people, you know, by Roman uh, emperors. And uh, don't forget that uh, my country uh, created, let's say, a civilization under uh, the protection of offensive Greek uh, gods. After Christians come in Greece, our civilization, our, uh, our ancient monuments, our, uh, let's say, philosophy destroyed. So it reflects in my unconsciousness and uh, I have uh, a discuss uh, I feel uh, from a very young, uh, was I was very, very young, I started to have uh, a very, very bad thought for, Christian for Christianity. I think that uh, Christianity it's, uh, and to all of the religions that uh, govern the world, it's not only Christians, it's uh, Muslims, it's, uh, you know, uh, Hebrew, all these religions just make uh, troubles to, to our world, uh, just they want uh, to, to oppress uh, the people and uh, create fear to us so they can reign uh, in us. So you can basically enslave the... Exactly. A lot of Western exactly. countries destroy, destroy exactly. the heritage and culture and replace with their own thinking. Exactly, exactly. So I said, fuck off to them and uh, hail to Lucifer. Now, how it was back in the late 80s and early 90s for a black metal guy like you and the other legendary Greek guys, how it was like, okay, we are abandoning Christianity and saying fuck off to it. How did the uh, environment and, and the other people, how did they react? First of all, let's uh, begin uh, from the name. When in Greece in 87 uh, you create a band with the name Rotten Christ, was like, oh, come on, what is this? <laughs> Very offensive name. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And uh, we had a lot of problems with uh, local uh, society all over Greece. Uh, but also this period of time, we connected uh, with uh, a lot of great people from Norway, from uh, Finland, uh, from Sweden, all over the world, but especially with uh, 
a guy with Euronymous. Yep. We start uh, cooperate with him, and we st and really I have to mention that Euronymous uh, gave us a big opportunity to make our music famous all over the world. Uh, there were a lot of people that get uh, our music through Euronymous and uh, from other Norwegian uh, brothers. I have to tell my respect uh, for all these uh, Norwegian brothers. And uh, I was also in contact with a lot of uh, Swedish and uh, Finnish uh, guys of black metal. So we create a strong uh, circle, let's say. Of course, in Greece we don't uh, do some extreme things uh, that our brothers in Norway have uh, the bravery to do it, yeah. okay? Because uh, I respect them because uh, they do their beliefs uh, reality. It was great for me to see some guys that say, okay, we are not only say fuck off Christians, but we, uh, we burn down their churches. It was fantastic for me. They became my heroes. And, but we don't have the same, uh, you know, in Greece it's totally different the situation. For example, uh, it was uh, a very, very under police country. Yeah. And it was very, very difficult for us to spend time in a jail, you know. <laughs> I can imagine. I think, uh, I don't know if you know the movies uh, Express of the... Midnight Express. Midnight Express. Yeah, it's a it great movie. something like this. Uh, oh, horrible. And I have a story, maybe it's interesting. Uh, Euronymous sent uh, to Athens a friend of him uh, from Norway, Klaus, to kill uh, a Greek guy. Okay. Maybe I don't know if I can tell it now to the air. Yeah. Uh, but even Klaus came in Greece to kill uh, this guy. And also, uh, he was afraid to do it because uh, after he saw the Greek situation, he said, no, I can't do it to Euronymous, I have to return uh, with empty hands. <laughs> but of course, uh, I have a big respect for all these uh, Norwegian brothers that uh, of course, uh, do their true activities, make our music famous all over the world. Because for me, black metal, it's a really revolutionary movement because it's very easy and it's very good for uh, all the people to say fuck off police, fuck off government, fuck off what say. But it's very true, offensive to say "fuck off your Christ, fuck off your God." You know what I mean? Okay. It's, I know. I know what you mean. So I think that uh, black metal is the most revolutionary music that uh, the people, in fact, uh, don't want it for their kids. You know? Yeah. Because uh, they all of they want us as slaves. Okay. But I think uh, we had uh, the brave to say "fuck off" to your uh, beliefs. We want a new age, we want a new world order with freedom, with no slavery, with no, no your fucking guts. If I'm not mistaken, Rodin Christ was actually banned in Germany for the name back in the early 90s or so. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, among with cannibal corpse and like because of being too brutal and this is something that nowadays kids don't necessarily understand that some bands were just seem too dangerous to be played and albums to be sold uh, were you happy with this were you did it make you proud that okay we cannot sell our albums or play shows or was it just like damn i saw it by myself during our uh, fuck christ tour in 93, we, uh, Rotten Christ, uh, Blasphemy and Immortal uh, made the first black metal uh, tour uh, in the world, okay. The, of course, a lot, some of the shows uh, was uh, cancelled, not only because of Rotten Christ's name, because of uh, Christian threats. Uh, we have uh, Bob threats, we have uh, attacks, etc. In some shows, uh, we, the promoters uh, appear as with other names, not Rotten Christ. Yep. So you can feel that our name was really 
uh, a bunch in the stomach uh, of uh, you know Christian society and religious society and I think I'm proud to be a part of all of it I'm proud to have name a band Rotten Christ I'm proud to be a black metal fan from uh, my day from the day I remember well myself because for me black metal it's not uh, just a kind of music this is not uh, the meaning black metal is a way of life exactly now talking about the uh, early days of uh, Greece one thing has always kind of puzzled me. You started quite early on in the 80s. A lot of bands, even Swedish ones, started in the 90s. A lot of Norwegian bands started in the 90s, but you had Rodinkreis, you had Zenial, uh, Varadron, you had uh, Thorlord, and you had uh, Necromantia. So you were a lot of bands going on and uh, a lot of old guys who were like, okay, let's, let's do this kind of a black metal. How much of a brotherhood you were, or were it just kind of a coincidence? Uh, you are very, very well informed. Also, Greek uh, black metal scene is not uh, known as the Norwegian, uh, Swedish, Finnish uh, black metal scene. We were uh, very, very in the beginning of this uh, creation of music. As you said, it was Rotten Christ, Varathron, also I was a former member of Varathron, Zemial, Agatus, Necromancia, Kavir was also. Kavir, yeah. great friend, Panos of Kavir, and uh, of course, Sar Lord okay, was a project between uh, the Mangus and Sakis of Rotten Christ, uh, and a lot more bands that uh, disappeared uh, after a few years because they couldn't stand in uh, the fighting of Greek society against us. For us, we were in a true war with a Greek society. Uh, me and Sakis and uh, some other guys, a lot of times was arrested in the police without no reason, because just because we were black metal uh, fans with uh, our inverted cross, do our inverted cross, do uh, our pedagrams. Uh, it was very often uh, my mom came in the police station and uh, tried to put me out uh, because I was I was there without reason, just because uh, I was a black metal boy. And for me, do you know something else? For me, it's really strange how in an isolated uh, country like Greece, we were from the force to create uh, black metal, because Greece, it's in the south of uh, Europe. We are a pure country, believe me, very pure country. We don't have the technology you have here in the north of Europe. We don't have the money you have here in the Europe. And uh, sometimes uh, we are like, uh, we feel sometimes uh, this bullying, not for you, yeah, but yeah. from the, civiliz the, the civili civilized uh, Europe, that in fact that get the, your civilization from uh, pure Greece. But uh, we really have uh, to be very thankful to the black metal uh, community because these uh, kids in uh, Sweden, in Norway, in Germany, in uh, Finland loved us and uh, helped us uh, and uh, we, we own a lot of boosting uh, because I think that our music was very good and different, okay? Yes, it was very different from I the think, Nordic types. Exactly, I think that albums like Thy Mighty Contract, His Majesty of the Schwab, the albums of Zemial, uh, the, the total different albums of Necromadia was really revolutionary and was something different in uh, black metal uh, community, okay? Of course we love Norwegian black metal, but if you see the sound of Greek black metal, it's totally different from all of it's, uh, it's unique sound. We achieved to create our own sound. Maybe our sound was uh, more Mediterranean, a black metal sound. Uh, but for me, it's really strange uh, how we discovered black metal. Uh, so I came to the conclusion that uh, this is a gift from, uh, you know, from the demons, let's say, okay? Yeah. Because we were really, really isolated uh, with no internet, uh, no mobile phones uh, this time of period, uh, if you remember well. But uh, we can come close with all this uh, black metal uh, community in the north uh, of Europe. 
and from the first time uh, we get the respect of them. Uh, Euronymous was, uh, I don't know if you know the stories, Euronymous was ready to, to sign us uh, for an album uh, in a Death Like Silence and of course, uh, of course to release our uh, split LP with Burzum. But after you know the tragic, uh, the tragic story, story where uh, a good friend uh, uh, killed another uh, good friend, everything uh, go down. Everything turned into dust. Uh, talking about good friends murdering another friend, that must be really, really tragic for young people like you. Um, and I don't want to dig too much into that, but um, are you still in touch or friends with with V Kernes, or was it just the end of it? Uh, to be honest, I was very, very good friend with uh, V Kernes. Okay, and. Uh, in a hard uh, period of my life, I received uh, good help from him, so I have to tell it. But after uh, he murdered Euronymous, I never uh, have uh, spoken to him. Yeah, I totally understand. Now, talking about and it's not about death, okay, because yep. uh, one day we all uh, will die. But it's about... Uh, you know, I have always in my mind, and I have to tell it this, yeah. how was black metal if Euronymous uh, would be alive? Because for me, it was a great personality. If you check my Facebook, sometimes I have uh, released some letters of Euronymous to me. And uh, in uh, the age of 19, he has some great ideas about uh, black metal, about our uh, community. It was the guy, and I think that uh, musically was uh, this guy was genius. For example, for me, okay, I like the mayhem, but for me, the true mayhem was Euronymous. Yeah, definitely. Now, since you said like uh, Greece is an isolated place versus uh, the Nordic countries and Norway has their own kind of a grim sound, uh, Sweden had a very melodic style and lots of those bands were a lot faster. But in, in Greek scene, it seems like all the bands had more warmer sound and not so much speed. It was almost like building more on the atmosphere. Uh, and all the Greek bands, like you mentioned, they have a, some kind of a similarity to it. Was it intentional to keep it like, okay, we are Greek bands and we're gonna sound like Greek bands? Or did it just happen accidentally? Uh, you know, maybe we can uh, say it happened accidentally, but I think it was unconsciously because of our ancient, uh, you know, Greece, Every place is full of ancient uh, stones. Uh, every place is full uh, of uh, our ancient wisdom, our, uh, our ancient uh, philosophers. Uh, so I think uh, this environment had uh, an esoteric uh, attraction in our feelings and our way of uh, creating uh, art in general, not only music. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think uh, because I saw that the black metal maybe in 100 years will be a very... It, it's like uh, classical music. Uh, look all these classical composers, okay. Now they are famous, uh, but in the time uh, they composed, worth uh, nothing for uh, their society, okay. They were like satanists, they were like scams. So I think uh, that Greece and the environment uh, has a really big effect uh, in our unconsciousness to create music, to create uh, poetry, to create philosophy. So, okay, we can say it happened accidentally. And uh, to be honest, I think uh, that uh, this uh, kind of music, of uh, unique kind of music, maybe was created by Rotting Christ that uh, started a melodic uh, kind of black metal with keys, uh, etc. Then was Necro Romantia, of course, that create uh, a kind of uh, jazzy black metal, uh, let's say. And uh, of course, there were fantastic bands like Zemial, Kavir, uh, that uh, got this influence and make it uh, even uh, better, even uh, more influential. So, 
maybe you can say it happened accidentally, but I think it's not accidentally. It's happened because uh, we have an ancient uh, civilization that uh, flow in every one of us that released from Christianity and all these shit. Now, since Greece is known as the heart and home and womb of uh, Western civilization, after all, not only the, the mythos with God stories and all, but also everything from mathematics to philosophy g comes from uh, Greece, and you have a great, great uh, history with wars and uh, advancements in technology and everything. Do you ever feel like you want to tell these stories to people with black metal, like how good it is or how much things have happened in in Greece. First of all, uh, to make it clear, I must say that I have a big uh, respect for all the civilizations of Europe, okay? I respect your uh, history about Vikings, your ancient gods. Uh, it's not only Greece, of course. As but you, you were see, a lot older. <laughs> I mean, we, we were still eating mud when your people were building cities and creating universities, it's basically. not a problem, uh, but uh, we have to respect all uh, the European civilizations, okay? And to, we have uh, to really to support uh, our, you know, our ancient roots, and to stand uh, against all this that uh, want to destroy our roots. Okay, and uh, as you said, uh, okay, in uh, Greece uh, had created uh, mathematics, had created, uh, you know. Uh, geometry and uh, the people uh, that uh, in, and of course in Greece still there are a lot of people that uh, start uh, return to this uh, old uh, you know philosophy I don't uh, want to say to people okay believe to the, to ancient gods of uh, you know of Greece but uh, I want to say to people that have to have an eye in the Greek philosophy and uh, they can change uh, their way of uh, thinking, you know. And uh, all the black Greek black metal scene, uh, even uh, the, young, the young bands now, if you have an eye of it, you will see that have a really philosophical, uh, you know, uh, eye in their music. Of course, I don't want to say that uh, Greek black metal is the best uh, black metal in the world. No, this is bullshit. Uh, black metal is something uh, worldwide ph phenomenon. And kind I, of a universal. Yes, yes, and I support uh, all the bands, and I'm very, very happy to see more and more young black metal bands uh, to come, and I'm very happy to see the increase, uh, black metal to increase, because uh, black metal is the meaning of freedom, it's the meaning of Lucifer, it's the Meaning that uh, uh, she see the God of Light, Lucifer, fuck off uh, Jesus Christ, fuck off uh, the uh, lies. Okay. So I think uh, that we were also, uh, you know, a stone in the black metal uh, wheel. Mm -hmm. Now talking about your music before we let you go, mm -hmm. and since you have now one album out and that one particular great EP also. Uh, what is the next step for Yoth Iria? Now that the world is more open with after pandemic restrictions, you get to play shows, but when will there be more new Yoth Iria music? Okay, yes. Uh, actually, the new album, uh, like compositions are ready. It's about uh, 11 new tracks. Of course, I have uh, to enter the studio to make it uh, true. And, uh, but in my plans, it's also to play as more as uh, live I can because I really like playing live, okay? Of course, I have to tell to the people uh, not uh, to expect the mangoes in the live because the mangoes never played uh, any live shows, you know? Okay. He's uh, totally against uh, live shows. But for me, it's very important to play live shows and to come in touch with the people, with old friends, with new friends, uh, 
to change opinion to, to make our meaning like uh, I do like with you clear uh, to the black metal humanity. So the plan is uh, to release a new album hopefully in uh, September of two, next September, one year after of 2023, and to play as more shows as I can. All right. No. If you could choose one song to start listening to your people are like, okay, this band sounds so interesting, and which song to start with? It's really hard because it's like you said me, what of your kids is the best for you? Exactly. I know it's an annoying question. But uh, let's say, you know, the good with my music is that uh, if uh, you ask uh, 10 people, uh, can uh, tell you about 10 different uh, tracks they prefer. But let's say Sid the Jin because it's the first t- track I released in the air and to make my band known to the people. It was like uh, I'm your theory, Sid the Jin, my first track. Uh, let's so, go. So this is the door to yes, yes. open to so, get into your theory's world. Without to say it's the best track, let's say Sid the Jin. All right. Thank you so much. I thank you too. This is your theory, one of the best Greek bands ever. Hands down, so check out their music. I'm very stoked to see them one day after this interview is filmed. So we'll see how it goes with three guitars and all. So uh, it's gonna be spectacular. One last question, why three guitars? Why three guitars? In the album, uh, we have recorded about more than six guitars. So I was to give my music as uh, closer to the album I want. So I have to try this experiment with the guitars. And I hope you will like it. Me too. So check out these guys' music. You will find links provided in the description box of this video. I hope you like it and uh, spread the love. Tell your friends as well. And of course, if you prefer the physical format, go and buy the album. This is Rauta. This is Turku. This is Tim Mutilator and Joth Iria. See you. Thank you very much. Non serviam. Thank you so much. It was a really, really nice to have you this conversation. Um, before I let you go, um, let's take. Of course. Some, yeah.